All right, guys, let's go ahead and lay on our back and let's get this show on the road. I don't know about you guys, but I'm ready. Okay, on your backs, nice and comfy. Fix your clothes, <laughs> wardrobe adjustments. Okay, so first things first, take your attention inside your body, breathe in, breathe out. Let's just let go of unnecessary tension, please. We're gonna take three beautiful cleansing breaths. Now, every time you breathe in, I want you to imagine drawing energy into your body. And then imagine that energy being distributed throughout the whole structure, all the tissues from top to toe, shoulder to fingertip. Just breathe in, breathe out, absorb that energy. And then just gently allow that energy to expand and spread throughout your whole body. So as you wiggle your toes, just imagine all that beautiful energy that you just brought into your lungs is going down all the way down to the tips of your toes, the tips of your fingertips. And relax as much as you possibly can. You can rotate your head from side to side, just allowing the ground to massage the backside of your skull. And just go ahead and bring into mind something you're thankful for this morning. Just notice how that makes you feel. I want you guys to imagine that you have untapped potential, untapped greatness, untapped power that lives in your being. And every time you relax, you allow that power to open and expand throughout the whole body, top to toe, shoulder to fingertips. Let's go ahead and place our hands on our abdomen this morning. Now, as you place your hands on your abdomen, we're going to just massage very gently with some clockwise circles. Now, when my hands come to the side, I can open them up and get the side part and then the middle part and then over to the other side. Now from here, let's walk our fingers around the abdomen. Just very slowly, gently, mindfully, applying additional pressure wherever we feel necessary. It's kind of an intuitive pressure where you're pressing in according to what you feel your body needs. And this should be a part of our daily self-care routine. Okay, so every day we should be massaging into our abdomen at least twice, morning and night. Okay, and that's a good way to kind of get everything where it's supposed to be and get us set and prepared for the rest of the day. All right, from here, let's bend our left leg foot flat on the ground. You're gonna press through that heel and massage towards the backside, okay? Then we're gonna switch legs. So I straighten that leg and then bend the other one, press through my heel, and I'm just gonna massage through the backside. So I'm hitting those kidneys, I'm hitting the spine, hitting a little bit of the colon, a little bit of the liver, I'm just smiling at those tissues and organs as my mind passes over them. Switch sides. And you start to expand. You know, if you guys are massaging, you know, whatever you guys are doing is totally fine. The idea is to use my suggestions as a as a starting point. And then to allow your intuition to direct and fill in the gaps. The body knows. The body 
has a wisdom that we want to tap into. We think stuff all the time, but that those thoughts aren't always in line with the truth. The body, on the other hand, never lies. Okay, guys. So our first movement today is long rolls. We've done long rolls before. Let's make our bodies as long as we can. Arms above our heads. And all you're gonna do is, you're gonna take one arm up and then across the body. And you're gonna reach and don't go onto your stomach until the very last moment. And, and then even when you do, do it with control. Once you're on your stomach, go ahead and return to your backside, reaching through the arm, okay? And then switch sides. So we're reaching up and across. So these are nice and slow movements to start off with today, guys, nice and easy. Once you make it to your stomach, rock those hips back and forth. Relax your spine, massage your lower abdomen into the ground, okay? And then take your hand, reach it behind, slowly returning to your backside and then switch sides again. Nice and easy. Reach and roll, okay? Next movement is our Rocky. So we're just going to bend both knees, feet flat on the ground. I'm going to tuck my butt underneath, lift the legs up off the ground, start with some gentle rocking forward and back. After about five, come up to a seated position and reach in between your legs, please. There is reach. Now when I rock back, do it nice and slow. This is an abdominal exercise. So there's a little bit of a, it's, it's more isometric probably in the abdominals, but it could be a little eccentric too if you're lengthening as you go. But the idea is you wanna massage the back into the ground while simultaneously contracting in the abdominals. You're reaching, you can rock as many times as you like, forward and back. You can take your knees really close to the chest, or you can practice or experiment with straightening out the legs during any part of the process that you want. Maybe you want to hang out with your feet above your head a little bit. That's cool. Rock forward and back, and then add your gentle reach, okay? This is such an important movement, guys. Think about it. Even when you get out of the bed in the morning, you're using this one. It's like, <laughs> got to be able to do that one. All right. And then from here, let's move into some side sit transitions. Sit in our side sit. One knee bent to the front, one knee bent to the back. We're going to post both arms behind and swivel those knees from side to side. Okay, so this is great for the hips. Remember, grease and glide those hips, get them ready for more. Inhale, exhale. See if you can match your breathing with your movement. And what that does is it helps you to have more presence with within and throughout the movement. Now, if you want to take your hands out of it, feel free. So now we're getting a little bit more of like an abdominal exercise. I always like to kind of keep my elbows into my body. This is kind of a ready position. So whether I'm going to go down or if I'm going to protect myself, this is a good ready position here. So always keeping those elbows into the body.
you can add some cervical rotation. So looking around. And I'm a big fan of doing the movements that you don't do in your daily life. So if you're at the computer all day or you're always looking down, always reading books or whatever you're doing, do the opposite. Look around. Let's go back on our backside so for some more long rolls. This time we're gonna lead with the leg. Same position, arms above the head. Try to keep the ribs down in front, please. Okay, and the tendency when we put our arms above our head is to arch through the low back. And what we wanna do is we wanna try to stretch the pectoralis minor, and we do that by keeping the ribs down. We're gonna reach the leg up this time and reach it across the body, rolling onto your stomach, please. Once again, on the stomach, let's rock the hips from side to side, massaging our abdominals. You're even massaging the front sides of your legs. Wherever you bring your attention, energy flows where your attention goes. So you're getting some additional benefit by bringing your attention to different parts of your body. Okay, so from here, when we turn on our back or back to our backside, squeeze the glutes first, then bend the leg and then reach that leg behind. And what that does is it just kind of helps to stabilize the lower back um, and kind of keep your movement a little bit safer, for lack of better words. Okay, so again, squeezing through the glutes, bending the knee, reaching by, by really contracting through that posterior hip. So the posterior hip is, is elongating here, and then I'm going to shorten it, contract it, Get it involved. Some nice gentle rocking of the pelvis. Reach that leg behind. Okay. Let's go right back into some rocking. Okay. So this time, we're going to add a little bit of like a side rock. So instead of going straight back, you're going to roll a little bit more to the side. Now, what I could do is I could roll and then rock up, just like so. So I'm rolling a little bit more towards the side and then coming up to my seated position. Every time you come up, you're getting ready for something else. Okay, so I'm like getting ready to come up. It's not a passive you know, just collapse into the position. You're coming up into that seated position because you're ready. You're ready for something else. Like maybe I want to jump up real quick, right? Maybe I want to get on some stuff. Get busy. Maybe I need to get somewhere. Who knows? Now, if you want, you're always welcome to add or reach into the movement. Love these rocking movements. So, so good for the body. Just really nice to feel the ground massaging into the tissues as it compresses in. And then we come out of it nice and slow. You want to speed it up a little bit? That's on you. Feel free. You want to add those get-ups to get more, more of that heart rate up? That's on you. Okay. So right back up into our side sit uh, transitions. This time, we're going to add a hip press. So we'll start with the hip press just so we know what that's, that's going to look like. We're going to keep a long spine, hinge forward at the, at the hips, and then press through that, that posterior hip to get you into this upright position. To lower yourself down, keep that neutral spine. You can use your hand if you like. Swivel the knees to the other side. Let's switch sides. So hinge, press, lower, switch. Hinge, press. Remember, you're always ready. So I'm always thinking about, you know, again, what movements do I need? What supplementation do I need of movement to make sure that my movement nutrition is on point? 
Always looking at movement through the lens of nutrition. Thank you, Katie Bowman, for your wisdom in that department. She's the one that came up with that term as far as I know, but it's beautiful. And even while we do these movements, there's always little micro movements, right? So I could be, you know, you could just go boom, 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 but, or you can really explore the sensations of the movement as you go. Making sure the breath is synchronized with your movement. Okay. All right, guys, back onto the ground one more time for our long rolls. This time, when we, what we're going to do is we're going to start on our back. And all you're going to do is you're going to lead with the belly button over to the side and you're going to crunch into a fetal position right back onto your backside. So I'm going to extend through the arms and legs and leading with the belly button, I'm going to crunch to the other side. So I extend through the arms and legs and then I crunch. And this is my go-to move for resetting the back, the low back, especially if you have low back issues. This is my go-to move right here. Let's say you've been out gardening all day or you've been doing a lot of something and your back is maybe talking to you a little bit, maybe not so happy. This is the move, fam, right here. So you're on your back because what's happening is, is I'm contracting my abdominals, internal, external, oblique, and then kind of integrating functional movements. A lot of times when we've been bent over for too long, the low back muscles, the rectus spinae, et cetera, they get really tight, really fatigued. And so what we're doing now is we're contracting the antagonists of those back muscles. And we call that reciprocal inhibition. If your back muscles are tight, contract your abdominals, which are the antagonists of your back muscles to a greater or lesser degree. And that helps to recalibrate and to reset the muscles of the back. Is it too early for a lesson in movement? It's never too early. Okay, so right back to our rocking. This time we're going to add a get up. So you're going to rock. You're going to use the momentum of your arms and legs to come to standing. And then lower yourself right back down slowly with control. Okay, so you rock. Use that momentum of the arms and legs. You can add a knee tap. Come to standing. And then come right back down. So add whatever you want. But you're going to notice that today, all of our movements are going to be progressive where we're going to get a little bit improvisational as we go along. Once you've done the movement, you know, for one or two sets, you should already feel pretty comfortable with the movement we're doing. And then you just add your little details. So this is still rocking, but we're adding a get up. I could do that in so many different ways, right? I can do it with my feet together, or I could do it with my feet, one leg straight, one leg bent, and so many different variations. Just use rocking and get yourself up. Now, I could also even do a rock where I roll completely back over. Hey, whatever you like, make it yours. Rocking with a get up. Bang. All day. All right, guys. So that was basically our warm up series. Got ourselves just a little bit of an increased heart rate, breaths probably a little bit more dynamic now. So our next movement pattern we're going to start with is a knee hand crawl position, and we're going to start with some hip mobilizations. So with your hands under your shoulders, your knees under your hips, I want you to draw your belly button towards your spine. I want that spine to remain in a nice neutral position, and then 
I want you to take one leg off the ground and we're going to bring our leg into extension. From this position, you're going to bring the leg out to the side and then back door towards the ground. So again, I'm going back, out, side, back down, okay? Back, out, side, and down. Back, out, side, and down. Okay, two more on this side, then we'll switch. Here, 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 down. You guys know what to do. Okay, let's switch sides, please. Back, out, and you don't have to do it so robotic. You can do it much more fluid. Again, the main thing is main, maintaining the stability of your core. Your body can move, but just try to maintain that neutral spine. Okay, so from here, we're going to move into a crawling pass under transition. It's basically taking ourselves from a knee hand crawl or a foot hand crawl to an inverted crawl. So what you're going to do is you're going to peel the knees up off the ground about an inch or two. We're going to lift opposite arm, opposite leg. The leg is going to pass under the body. Now we're in an inverted crawl. Let's reverse the order of that process to return to our knee hand or our foot hand crawl. If you need to lower those knees down, feel free. If you can keep them up, that's cool too. This movement's all about shoulder stability. You want to focus your attention on what's happening in the scapulothoracic joint. Think about the scapula and its relationship to the rib cage. A lot of people have shoulder issues that have not much to do with the glenohumeral joint, which is where your humerus, your upper arm bone meets your shoulder. Has a lot more to do with what's happening in the in the scapulothoracic region. You have four joints in the shoulder, right? Sternoclavicular, acromioclavicular, glenohumeral, and then our scapulothoracic. If any one of those joints is out of position, it can wreak havoc on your movement strategies. Why would those joints be out of position? I don't know. So this is the movement that helps to dial in our functionality of that scapulothoracic joint. That's the main one right there. Okay, so from here, let's get off those wrists a little bit and get into some abdominal work. So we're gonna do a hollow body extension. So I want you to lower yourself down onto your back. Knees are bent, you're gonna flatten your low back down onto the ground. I want your palms to come together in a prayer position, please. You're going to extend your arms and legs in opposite directions and then bring them right back together, okay? So remember, keep that low back on the ground. It's so important to mainly maintain the stability of the spine. Make sure that you're breathing as you go. You can always add variations to this one. If you wanna do one arm and one leg at a time, you can. You can also do opposite arm, opposite leg. <laughs> it was like tapping your head, rubbing your belly. <laughs> I almost couldn't do it. I'm gonna go up. <laughs> Ah, good times in M3. Okay, nice and easy. And again, make these movements work for you.
Roll those wrists around a little bit because we're going to get back into our knee hand crawl movements. So let's prepare those wrists, shall we? Okay, rock yourself up back into our knee hand crawl position, please. So this time to mobilize our hip, we're going to use a roll. So I want you to straighten one leg out behind you. We're going to lower ourselves down onto that hip. Roll over. And then come right back into our, our position, if you will. Okay. So again, I straighten the leg. Let me change my position here. Straighten the leg. I'm lowering myself down with control. I'm going to roll all the way through nice and slow. That leg stays straight while I come right back into my knee hand crawl position. Okay. So again, I got one knee bent, one leg straightened behind me. You can't see me, can you? Okay. There's so much you could do here. I want to encourage you guys to play around with pressing into the top side of that foot, pressing down into the front line of your leg and controlling that movement as you roll. When I get into this position here, I'm pressing into the side of my leg. And then I come right back into this knee hand position, switch legs. Okay, so again, got my leg, one knee bent, one leg straight. I'm really exploring those sensations. Boy, we didn't get a lot of time on that one at all, did we? Let's go back onto our backside for our hollow body extensions, please. 90 seconds goes by fast sometimes. Okay, so remember, draw your belly button towards your spine. Palms come together in front. Get your nice extension on. Now, this is a great massage for your internal organs, okay? So, as you're breathing, using your diaphragm, you're expanding those lower ribs, front sides, and back. So, your abdominal muscles are contracting, right? Your belly button's drawn towards your spine, but the lower ribs, front sides, and back are expanding as that diaphragm comes down and massages your intestines and it also massages your heart and lungs. The diaphragm is one of the most powerful and amazing massage therapists that ever lived. <laughs> you guys want to know that one? To save your life, keep you healthy, keep you strong. Okay, at any time, if you want to kind of hold in this hollow body position, you can kind of add a little bit of time under tension. As long as that low back stays on the ground, we're good. Okay, come up please, back into our knee hand crawl one more time. So we have this time, we're going to focus on some step outs. So what that means is from this knee hand or foot hand crawl position, I'm gonna step out into different positions with my leg, okay? So I'll do about five per leg, per side. I can step in all sorts of different directions. So I can go really long, I can go short, switch sides. Okay, so again, you're just stepping out and you can always add, right? Like step out for what? I don't know, get up, use your mind, use your imagination. What's it for? Have some fun, right? When I'm in these different positions, I'm always thinking about what can I add? How much fun can I have in this movement this morning? And usually, even if I'm not feeling like exercising, the more I use my imagination, the more I get distracted from the fact that I don't feel like working out. So 
So switch on your own, you can also do alternating. So one leg steps out, then the other leg, step in between, add a warrior pose, I don't know, whatever you want. That was my sign language for a warrior pose. All the yogis out there are probably going to be bent seeing that disgraceful sign language. Okay. So let's go right back into our crawling position. This time what we're going to do is we're going to add a get up. So from our crawling position, you got some options here. Number one, I can walk my hands back towards my feet and then come to standing, lower myself right back down. That's option number one. Option number two, I could do my transition, walk my hands forward, come to standing, lower myself down. So that's option number two. What I would encourage you to do is do one of each. So I walk my hands back from my foot hand crawl, do my pass under transition to inverted, walk my hands forward, stand up, lower myself down. Okay, just moving in and out through your inverted and foot hand crawl. Remember, whenever you do your transitions, you're really focusing on stability of the shoulder. It's so important. You can add a little bit of Crawling through your room. Make sure those toes are spread wide. Okay, everybody. Let's go back onto our backside one last time for some hollow body extensions. Okay, so again, with the feet flat on the ground, press that low back into the ground. Make sure your abdominal muscles are nice and strong and contracted. From here, bring those legs up off the ground. Palms come together. Reach. Reach. Now this time, make sure that you add, oops, <laughs> make sure you add a couple holes, okay? So you can be extending through the arms and legs and at some point, give yourself a nice hold. You can also add a little bit of a lateral roll. So you're not fully rolling over, but you're just changing the angle of pressure or the angle of load so that you start to hit some of those oblique muscles, okay? So you can do your extension, you could do your hold and you could do your Partial roll, whatever you like. Gotta love the hollow body hold. So very good for those abdominal muscles. Make sure your abdominal muscles beautiful, healthy and strong. Try to keep those legs together. Five seconds. Hold out that last couple seconds and bam. Okay, let's come to a standing position, please. So rock yourselves up, come to standing. Get my camera angle here. Okay, so from here, we're going to do a sumo squat to lunge transition. I want your feet double shoulder width apart, please. From here, your toes or your feet are pointed out to the side. You're going to gently lower your caboose towards the ground. Okay, just kind of get a sense of how that feels. Now from here, drop one knee towards the ground and then take that knee a little bit closer and right back up. Come right back into your sumo squat position. 
Okay, so we're gonna drop one knee towards the ground, lower, come up, come into our squat, switch. So this transition in and out of the sumo squat to lunge, so important for the health of our hips. So you can always add some micro movements as we're doing this one. Drop the knee, lower it, come right back up. Make sure you feel the ground with your feet nice and strong. Nice and strong the whole time. I'm going to add, you know what to do, feel free. This is like one of my go-to moves for legs. I mean, this is, this is money right here as far as I'm concerned. Okay, guys, from here, we're going to do some kicking. Now, it's not all about form. I just want you to get that leg out in front of the body. So watch this. We're going to assume we don't even have to get into a front stance, but we're just going to alternately kick the leg out in front of the body. You could do what might be known as a front kick. You can kind of turn it over a little bit, get more of a round kick. I don't care about form. I just want you to get that leg out in front of the body. This is a balancing movement. So even though I'm kicking the leg out, I'm making sure that I'm stable on that supporting leg. Okay. If you want to add the arms, kind of keep the arms up and in towards your body. The mistake, if you were actually trying to do this kick functionally, the mistake people often make is to throw the arms out. Okay, so you're just keeping those arms in, getting some nice gentle kicks. You want to slow it down, feel free. I'm going to take a higher, a lower. I'm going to snap it out. Just make sure it works for you. Remember, this is a balancing movement. So whatever leg I'm balancing on, I want to make sure I spread my toes wide. So, so critical. Okay, back into our sumo squat with lunge, okay? So this time, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna take the knee, take it down, come back up. But this time, we're gonna straighten that front leg. Notice the sensation that you feel in the front side of the back leg of the hip right there, okay? So again, drop the knee, lower it down, come right back up, straighten the front leg. Okay, notice the sensations that you feel. Come back to center, switch sides. Lower, straighten. Come back to center. Lower, straighten. We can always add to this one, remember, so I can lower, maybe even add a little bit of a reach. So many different options here. So make sure you're spreading those toes wide. Make sure that your, your legs feel nice and stable. Make sure that you're contracting through the abdominal muscles. Your shoulders are broad and wide. Your spine is long by pressing through the crown of the head. Each position, I want you to assess the quality and the sensation of that movement really feeling the texture of the ground with your feet, bringing some attention there. Strong and stable the whole time. Okay, and your reaches, straighten that front leg and come back. Ooh. Lower, straighten, come back to center. Okay, guys, so this time we're going to go back to our kicks. This time we're going to add a little bit. We're going to do some inside-outside movements. So watch how I do this. Inside-outside. Inside-outside. 
So it's almost like we're stepping over an obstacle, right? If you want to do outside inside, that's also a good option. Again, focusing on control, making sure those Elbows stay in closer towards the body. And always add a little bit of a balance. Remember, this is a balancing movement. So the longer I stay with my leg up into the air, the more I'm going to be challenging that balance dynamic. You can also roll back to your kicks. And heel thrust towards the front. Boom, boom, all day. You can also add some back kicks. They're really good. This is really good for the glutes. Okay, fam, right back into our sumo squats one last time. So sumo squat position, drop a knee, lower the knee, come back up, straighten the leg. This time we're adding that reach. Okay, come back to center, drop the knee, Lower it down, come back up, straighten the front leg, and really reach. Starting through the lower abdomen, reach, and then come right back to center. Drop the leg, okay, come back, straighten that front leg, add the reach. Just notice the sensations there. You should really feel the stability of the lower body in this movement, okay? So drop, drop, come out, straighten, reach, okay? Take your time with this movement, drop it down. Let's say you wanna get a different angle, add some rotation. Drop it down, come back, reach, you can also reach behind from this position as well with that straightened leg in front. Come right back to center, switch sides. Here, here, and here, add my rotation. Notice how these movements really challenge your balance and stability. Okay, it's not just strength, it's also about balance. Because as we challenge our balance, we're also strengthening at the same time. And we're also strengthening not just the big muscles, but the intrinsic muscles of the joints, the muscles that are, are smaller and located tight into the joint. Okay, guys, last set of kicks. Let's get it. Boom. 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 Yeah, my legs are already feeling it. I hope your legs are feeling it too. Whatever you like to do on this one, feel free. Want to add that hop? Boom. Your legs are a powerful tool when it comes to self-defense much longer and they're much more powerful than any other part of your body so we can get a lot out of these kicks by understanding how important they are for overall life and function got that obstacle to get over no problem
Okay, everybody. Let's come down onto the ground. We're going to do our cool down already. And what I want you guys to do is, is really start to control the breath. So we're going to lay on our backs to start. I want you to focus on the breath. Actually, excuse me. We're going to stretch out the hip flexors first before we get down onto the ground. If you need to use a pillow for this one, feel free. I like to. So let's do a little bit of a hip flexor stretch. Some call this the couch stretch. You can bring your leg up behind, but if you don't have a pillow, I wouldn't really recommend that personally. But find yourself into a good position first. Oftentimes that involves tucking the pelvis underneath, creating length through the spine, contracting through the posterior hip. And once you're in good position, then you can start to bring your body weight forward and glide through that position. You can also change the position of that back leg to change the stretch dynamic, okay? I can get so many different angles and variations out of this movement. It doesn't have to be just a static hold or a passive hold. You can add the functionality or the benefit by adding movement. Okay, so as you find those areas that feel a little bit stuck, I want you to pause, breathe into it. You can add some gentle hip circles. So just go very slowly, nice and easy. Start to dial in that breath, slowing everything down, drawing the power from the breath into the body and then imagining it going everywhere. Nice and strong. Let's go ahead and switch sides. So remember, position first. Get yourself into that nice position. And again, if you guys are already like, yeah, Daniel, we've done this for a thousand times, then just play around with your angles and your positions. Add some cervical rotation. Add some eye movement. Whatever you like. There's always something else that we can explore. Don't leave anything on the table. Make sure that you're really exploring movement and also allowing your body to let you know what it needs. This is a great movement, a very critical stretch for us to get into on a regular basis. Stretching the front side of the hip. Forget about it, so important. But remember, while you guys do this, feel the, the nice, powerful feet engaging and connecting relating with the ground okay let's switch sides one more time can't get enough of this quad and hip flexor stretch okay on this one i'm actually gonna come forward a little bit with my body weight and i'm gonna bend this knee to grab my foot and i'm gonna come right back into this position Again, trying to assume that nice, stable position of my spine. I don't want to be arching through the low back. I want to maintain the control through the front. Okay, so if I want to add a reach, I can. Sometimes it's, it's good to imagine somebody's trying to push you over. So then you start to contract muscles in more of a, with more of an emphasis on stability. And again, I can kind of change some of the angles that I'm holding with my leg. You'll notice that as you start to change your position, you get a different stretch on different, of, different fibers of the quadricep. And add one hand to the ground, just really focusing on opening up the front side. Don't let that posterior hip go to sleep. Keep it on, okay? Let's go ahead and switch sides one last time. So again, get yourself into your good position first. On this one, I'm gonna be bending my leg. So I'm gonna bring my body weight forward because it's a little easier on my knee. From here, I grab my foot. I'm gonna contract my abdominals before I even come up. 
Now that I'm up, I want to reassess my position and make sure that I'm strong through the core, opening up through the front side of the of the back leg hip. And I want to make sure that the glute on that back hip is on. Okay. Nice and strong. I can add my reaches if I like. Length through the crown of the head. Gentle chin tuck. Focusing on slowing down the breath. Nice and easy. All right, guys, from here, let's slowly come out of this position nice and easy. We're going to come onto our hands and knees. We're going to drop our pelvis towards the ground, moving into a cobra pose. So hands and knees and then drop your pelvis towards the ground. Cobra pose. Opening up again that front of the hip. Now I can rock my body weight from side to side. Really focus on elongating through the breath. You don't want to collapse through your shoulders, but rather press through the palms and fingertips so that your, your shoulders, remember that scap scapulothoracic joint, the scapula on the rib cage, you want that to be really honed in on. Honed in, well, you know what I mean. Focus in on it and make sure that it's strong and stable. Okay. Now from here, let's drop our weight back over our heels into a child's pose. We're not staying here long, so don't get too comfy. We're going to send a wave of movement through the mid back. Come right back into Cobra. You can curl your toes under or keep them straight. Choice is yours. I'm going to draw my belly button towards my spine. I'm going to squeeze my hip flexors, come right back into child's pose. So I'm really squeezing here in the front of the hip. And then lower myself back into Cobra. So I'm going to come back, child's pose, and then right back into Cobra. So you guys can make this as dynamic as you want. I like to keep my knees up off the ground personally because I, I feel like the contractions that manifest are really helpful and functional. Add whatever little variations you like to make it work for you. Okay, guys, let's lower ourselves down onto the ground and roll onto our backs, please. All right, so tune your attention into your body. Okay, with your knees bent, I want you to slowly lower your knees from side to side, just relaxing through the hips. Breathing deeply and expansively every single time. From here, we're gonna go into a happy baby pose, okay? So you're gonna take your fingers, wrap them around your big toe, and take the hips open in the front, and you can roll from side to side. This should feel lovely on the low back. It should feel really good in the hips. If you wanna add a little bit to this one, straightening out those legs a little bit, giving a little bit of a stretch to the back, Feel free. Happy baby pose. I think this is happy baby. I feel like a happy baby when I do it. <laughs> nice and easy. Okay, guys. From here, I want you to bring your feet together in front and you're just going to open up those hips, holding on to your feet and just rock your hips from side to side. So you can see I'm just holding my ankles. My feet are together. 
And I'm just gently rocking my hips from side to side, allowing those knees to come closer to the ground. Should feel really relaxing. You don't want to allow your back to come too far off the ground, the low back that is. You want to try to kind of maintain a little bit of stability in your spine so that your hips can open up. Okay, slowly, gently, easily, we're going to bring one leg to the chest, straighten one leg down, bring that leg across the body, please. Inhale, exhale, focus on stretching and relaxing through the lateral rib cage. Relax. Rotate your neck in the opposite direction. After one complete breath cycle, let's switch sides one last time. And one last movement. <laughs> really relax your whole spine and breathe into this position, opening up through the front of the chest, opening up through the lateral rib cage. I always like to add a little bit of massage into the different tissues. Okay, guys, come out of this position nice and slow. Let's rock ourselves up to an upright position on our mat. If you need to chill here a little bit longer, you feel free to do so. That's your business. And in fact, I would encourage you guys to relax because in order for your tissues to get the most benefit, we want to follow up our movement practice with a very beautiful and intense relaxation process. So see if you can't grow your capacity to relax by engaging in relaxing behaviors as much as possible. What is a relaxing behavior? How about breathing? Let's take one together before we wrap up today. Notice how good that feels. Oh, you missed that one. Try this next one I'm gonna do. Breathe in. Exhale slow. Okay, guys, that's all I got for you today. You know, I got a lot of love for all you guys because I always feel much better when you guys are here working out with me. Of course, I feel good anyways because exercise is good. But when you guys keep showing up every week, it really touches my heart in a deep place. So, yes, keep smiling, keep breathing deeply, keep stay hopeful and faithful that no matter what, everything's going to work out. I don't know what's happening this summer, Kelly. We'll have to see about that. Um, they wanted to take these classes back to the college. I just don't know if that's going to happen. Um, I will, Janice. I'll definitely keep you in the loop. We'll figure it out. Where there's a will, there's a... That's right, everybody. A way. <laughs> Oh, boy, I never get sick of talking to myself. Well, actually, I know I'm talking to you. It's just that, you know, normally I get to see your beautiful faces and everything else. Thank you, Cindy. You have a great day as well. Lots of love to you guys. I really care about you guys and, and appreciate you deeply in my heart. Thank you so much for being with me today. So much fun. So you understand, Kelly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bueller. <laughs> Bueller. Oh, good times. All right, guys. <laughs> oh, good times. Thank you so much. Have a great day, guys. I'll see you guys next week, okay?